This is our VM Mermaid. It can sleep up to five adults. This back three seats turn into a bed with legs underneath to keep it stable. The front seat also converts into a bed with support underneath as well. We'll go through the operation of those later on in the video. On this wall, you have most of the control panel for the van. First one is a battery monitor. You do not need to do anything about that. It just monitors your battery level. Those two are plugs if you need to make coffee, plug in your laptop, or charge your phone. For the regular plugs to work, you do have to turn the inverter on. This is the main control for all the lights in the van, and it's on the dimmer. And this is the water and air heater all-in-one little device. To operate it, just tap the button in the middle. The screen will line up, and make sure you are seeing this heat icon is flashing. And you tap OK again, and you can set on how long you want it to be on. It's on the timer to preserve your energy. You click OK again. Now the rain turns red and it showed on earlier. So by doing this, both of your water heater and your air heater are turned on. And it is using the diesel fuel from your fuel tank. The vent for the heater itself is right below here. But for the air actually flow, you actually need to come over here to the heater control for both the fan speed and temperature. So this is how hot you want your fan to be and what's the fan speed you want. So turning both of them out, you can hear the fan is now flowing. If you don't turn anything on here, there will be no air coming out from your vent. But hot water heater will stay on the whole time this is on. This is the inverter for your regular plug to work. The inverter does have to be on, um, such as microwave. But if you're just using your heater, your ceiling lights, water pump, those regular functions, then you don't need to have the inverter on. Now we'll turn it on. You hear a short beep from the back of the van. That's where the inverter is located. And now the microwave is on. That is indicator. The inverter is on and working. And we'll go ahead and turn the heater controls off and we can come over here and shut everything down as well. Click it again and then until you see off and then confirm. Now it is off. This is the water pump. If you need water to work, this need to be on, but your inverter do not need to be on for the water to work. The faucet has a sprayer. You can pull it down and clean the sink as well since it is a quite large sink. This van has a 30 gallon fresh water tank and there is no gray water tank. The gray water is directly drained to the floor. This is the gray water and it's just directly connected below the floor. So just be aware where you're at um, since you're probably just washing your hand and vegetables, um, that would be okay. But if you have food waste going down, be aware of the bare situation. This is where the propane is located. Your cooktop will be using the propane, which we'll go through here in a bit. There's one button here that's for cooktop control. The cooktop is right here. To use it, there it is on a double safety. So right now the cooktop control is not on. And even if the propane tank is on, you cannot, you cannot make it work. So to it for it to work, you have to turn on the cooktop control to see a light. Make sure your propane is on and you can let air S go and then spark. Now you have your cooktop on. To close this lid, there's an instruction on here as well, you need to lift it up a little bit and then close it. If you're just closing it, it will not close for a safety feature. Underneath the van here, there is the water pump the heater's fan, and of course your propane. There's a gauge on here. Most of the gas station can fill the tank. When I'm not using it, I like to turn it off. All of your cooking appliances and bowls and plates are in this cabinets below the microwave. On the top here, there are some towels and pans and um, cooking gadget. And if you lift those two boards, you can see the cooking pots and pans along with more bowls and plates. In the bathroom here, we have both a shower and a compost toilet. The shower will work if you turn the water pump on and if you need hot water, make sure that hot water heater unit, which is this one, is on as well. 
when you're done with cleaning and putting everything back make sure everything is aligned and you can see the vent here may become open make sure the vent is connected again and latches are secured again now if you're taking a shower obviously this toilet is in the way what you can do is disconnect the vent here and unplug the power and remove this unit and put it you know somewhere in the hallway and after you shower put it back I just want to point out this is glue on the floor we're not able to remove um, it's not what you're thinking to operate the ceiling fan you can see the power button right here um, that will turn it on and off and the button next to the power button changes inflow versus outflow depends on if you want air going out or do you want air coming in if you're cooking it would make more sense to um, flow the air outwards if you're sleeping you might want airflow coming inwards. In the back of the van, there are batteries and inverter, solar charging devices, and annual breakers. There isn't an exterior plug to this van on the outside, and this is the one that will directly charge the battery. If you're at a uh, campground that has shore power, you can pull this out and charge your battery from here as well. But it does have solar panel and um, DC DC alternator charger so chances are you you do have enough battery un unless you're not moving um, at all or it's really cloudy the water to fill the water tank it is also very simple the hoses are up top to fill it you just need to uncap this this uh, part and then uh, put in the garden hose and you'll be able to get water we, there is not a water gauge on here but you can see where the water level is at this is where the fridge is located. When you rent it, there will be a tray sliding out. We are adding that in the next couple of days. Here is where we keep the table leg. It is very simple. Just plug into the hole here. Make sure it's stable. And the tabletop is right next to the seat. On the, the back of the table, there is another uh, base to align. Just drop it in. Table. To set up the second row seat to extend this bed almost double to its size and it's quite sturdy because there is leg underneath and also this surface is hard. We'll give you a uh, blanket, really thick blanket to use as a padding if you need this option. So I already set up the, uh, the bigger piece and I'll demonstrate how to set up the smaller piece. They do set up very similarly. Um, there's a head piece that just using Velcro that Velcro's onto the bigger piece that gives you a little bit more support on the head side so you're not bumping into the wall. So um, when, you, when we give it to you, it will come with flat packing like this. This is the second piece of this. To get the legs out, you will just lift it, push this button in, you'll be able to close it. So once you get that locked, make sure this is all popped and sturdy um, to release the legs. We'll pull it all the way. Um, you would need to it to, you would need it to be on the longest extension. There are different holes in here. And to lock it, you need to turn this leg this way. To lock it, and same as this way. Pull it out. It's locked right now. So push this lock leg in. Release it from the lock. Pull it out, and up until here find the lock and extend it now we have it all set up like this move it over to the seat and make sure you're not setting it up like this that defeats the whole purpose of extending the bed um, you want to make sure the this shorter piece align with the back and um, it should look like this and then to lock the two pieces together they're very strong ball crows so you just lift one on top of the other and lock it on the ball crow it is actually quite strong we can stand two adults on here no problem but it is very hard so we'll give you a blanket as padding to set up the front seat bedding there are two pieces to it. There, one, there's a block to fill the gap between the two seats. And then there is this big uh, folding bed on top of the seat. To inflate this block, we give you a 12 volt car charger inflated, inflator. You just need to plug this in into the cigarette charger and you'll be able to inflate it using this machine instead of blowing it out. The cigarette charger is located 
for you to use the inflator. Once you blow this up all the way, this is uh, actually not super full. You would want to inflate it as much as possible. Um, I like to put the little knob uh, on the back towards the floor to have logo facing this way. That way um, you're not you know, interfering with the, with the valve uh, while you're using it. And just simply unfold the bedding, put it on top, and we also have a pillow as well. Um, you can decide which way you want to sleep in. There are window covers for all the windows on top of the van here. There are also uh, these memory foam pieces to fill in the gap so you're sleeping on a more even surface.